If you are searching for a way to load multiple PDF files in Langchain to do information retrieval, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to load multiple PDF files into Langchain and use OpenAI's models for efficient information retrieval. So if you want to save time and streamline your research processes, keep watching. We're going to be using Google Colab. I will put a link to this notebook. Before using this notebook, just make sure that you go to file and make a copy in your own drive. Let me walk you through the notebook. So here we are installing different packages that are needed. So Langchain, Unstructured, that's for reading PDF files, OpenAI, Chroma, and DB, SRThon for faster speed, and uh, TikToken. Next, we are importing two different functions. So one is this unstructured PDF loader that will be used for loading files. And then we are also loading vector store and its creator. Now, this is where all the magic is going to be happening. So I'm going to go into the details later in the video. Next, we need an API key from OpenAI. So you can actually go to this link. You will need to make a account, which is free. And usually you get some free credits. So go to your account, click on API keys, and then you can create a new one. Simply name your API key and click create. And we're simply storing this uh, in the environment variable. Uh, I'm going to delete this. Uh, so you're not going to see my API key. Next, using this code, we connect our Google Drive. So if you run this code uh, for the first time, it will ask you permission to connect your to your Google Drive. So in this case, it's mounted. Um, so I don't really have to do anything again. Now, keep in mind, you can run this whole code uh, locally as well. Like you don't have to run it on your Google Drive. So what I did was uh, within my Google Drive, I created a folder called data and put uh, two different PDF files in there. So here's my folder. And then I took the state of the union and simply divided it into two different files. All right, so I have part one and part two. Now, later on, we are going to look at uh, an example of research papers, which has images as well, and see whether this approach can work or not. So this code is simply uh, taking the root directory as the Google Drive, then appending my data folder in, into the path, and you can see there are two different files in here. Next, we are using list comprehension to load uh, both these PDF files using two different data loaders. So essentially what is happening is here we, we have a for loop, and it's simply iterating on the number of files that we have in that directory, picking each one of them and creating a separate loader for them. So here you can see that we have two different data loaders. Depending on the number of uh, PDF files that you have in your directory, you will see um, the number of uh, data loaders changes. Next, we will look at vector store index creator. This one line of code is doing a lot of heavy duty work. Now, using this function, we are loading all the PDF files from these different loaders. And then there are three main steps that are happening after these documents are loaded. So first, documents are split into chunks. Then for each document, uh, this function creates embeddings. Then these documents and embeddings are stored in a vector store. In this case, by default, the vector score store is Chroma DB. In my previous video, I showed you how to do these uh, steps manually. But in this case, this single function is taking care of everything. In the background, it's using OpenAI's text embeddings. We will look at that in a bit. So let's run this code. Now you, you will see uh, this warning message because uh, Dectron 2 is not installed. I was having issues with it. If this library was installed, it was giving me errors. So that's why I didn't install it, but that's fine. For the time being, we will simply ignore these messages. Okay, now in order to retrieve information from our vector store, all you have to do is you use index.query and then whatever query or prompt you have, right? So in this case, what is the main topic of the address? The main topic of the address was investing in America and rebuilding infrastructure. So we, were look we are looking at state of the new union address. And let's look at a little more complex example. In this case, I have another folder called data underscore two. And here we have two different research papers. So this is uh, from the lip sync, we have to the paper, and then GPT for all. And 
these are the type of documents you probably are going to be working with. So there are images in there and a whole bunch of text. And let's do information retrieval on those. So the main steps are exactly the same. First, we are simply defining the path and we see there are these two documents. Then uh, we are creating our indices and creating a vector store for this. And here I am actually asking it a simple query. So index.query, how was the GPT for all model trained, right? So I get a response. Uh, GPT trained model was trained with LoRa and here are the number of parameters. Now, let's say if I have multiple documents and I want to see which document contains this information, right? So I actually can use uh, this query with source, with sources, right? And if I now give it the same prompt, right? So apart from uh, the response that we saw, it will also tell us the source. So if you remember, there are two papers but it uh, got the actual paper where this information is available. And that's pretty neat because if you want to look at the sources, you can actually do that. Let's uh, ask a question regarding this uh, lip sync paper. And I'm asking it who, uh, who wrote that paper. Uh, so it returns the lip sync paper was written by, and here's the list of authors, and then added the source as well. So uh, that's the file name that we have it in here. So it's pretty neat. Um, you can easily work with documents that have uh, images in here. Now let's look at what is actually happening under the hood in this vector store index creator. And it is important to understand because in case if you want to change any hyperparameters that you're using or you want to use different model. All right, so we will be using a lang change documentation for this purposes. There are three main steps. So first you load a document, then you split that document into uh, different chunks right so in this case it's a thousand characters chunk and, and you can define the overlap or you want to not overlap it's up to you and then you simply split that so you're going to have multiple documents in here then you want to select your uh, embeddings right so in this case uh, they're using open eyes embeddings but you can replace it with any other type of embedding that you want now using these embeddings and the text documents that you created with different chunks you want to create in the vector store so by default uh, chroma is used for the vector store but you can replace that uh, with some other vector stores now next we want to retrieve information uh, from our embedding and vector store so for that you simply create a retriever object right that is the retriever interface uh, that we'll be using uh, next putting everything together so we simply create a chain which has our large language model in this case, in this case OpenAI. Um, I think it's a text DaVinci. And then um, the retriever interface that we provided. And next, you simply run the query to get a response. And the vector store index creator is a simple wrapper around all these steps. So you can actually uh, pass these different parameters. So for example, in this case, we're passing is the vector store, the, where is chroma, the type of embedding, and then the type of uh, chunk creator or character splitter that we want to use. At the end, I went into a little bit more details than I usually do, but this is important uh, so that you are able to understand it and modify these things based on your own needs. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please comment below and I would try my best to answer them. Consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.